Welcome students, we are given this question, find a function such that f is defined from r to r and we are given this integral 0 to sin x f of t sin t dt is equal to f of sin x negative 1. Now the question wants us to find a function, so that is the important point that we will have to focus on and the domain is given to be a set of real numbers and this is what we have given. To solve this question we would have to use the fundamental theorem of calculus with chain rule and to understand fundamental theorem of calculus I would like to first give a small question. Now imagine you are asked to solve this d over dx of integral 3x to x squared e raised to the power some negative s squared times dx. So this is the question that has been given to you and you are expected to solve this. Now to solve this question there is a way of course when you see this question it looks very complex but all we need to do to solve this question is to apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. Now what is the theorem states? Now if I were to say take some f of s to be the antiderivative of f of s such that f of s is equal to e raised to the power negative s squared. Now if this is assumed then the solution then we would be able to rewrite the left to be equal to d over dx of capital F of in place of s you need to substitute x squared followed by negative capital F of 3x. Now there is one important observation you will have to make with regard to the fundamental theorem of calculus. This is the only theorem. You might be asking yourself why are they named it as fundamental. They have named it as fundamental because this is the only theorem that connects differentiation with integration and it is a powerful theorem. For the very fact that given a complex system like this just by taking an assumption like this we are able to boil this entire system to its solution. Now if I were to proceed I need to take the differentiation of f of x squared capital F of x squared and that is nothing but f dash of x squared. You don't need to worry about the differentiation of f in this case. All you need to do is to just place f dash of x squared. The differentiation will fall into place in a minute. Followed by the differentiation of this term x squared. That's going to be 2x here and the negative sign and the differentiation of f dash. In fact, it's a differentiation of f of 3x. So that's going to be f dash of 3x. Followed by the differentiation of 3x which is going to be 3. Now, if I were to rewrite now f of s is the antiderivative of the function f of s. So what would be f dash of s? Definitely it will have to give us f of x squared. That's it. Followed by 2 times x negative. This is going to be f of 3x multiplied with 3. However, I'll place a 3 there. Now I've taken f of s to be in fact from the question f of s is e raised to the power negative s squared. So f of x squared is going to be e raised to the power in place of s I am going to substitute x squared that has to be raised to the power 2 this will give me e raised to the power negative x to the power 4 so just write that with 2x multiplied with e raised to the power negative x to the power 4 followed by negative 3 times f of 3x is equal to e raised to the power negative in place of s you substitute 3x and e raised to the power 2 so this is going to be e raised to the power negative 9x squared so just substitute it there e raised to the power negative 9x squared. So this is the solution for d over dx of integral 3x to x squared e raised to the power negative s squared times dx. 
Now, why did I give you this? From here, I can extend this for any given function. So this would mean that if I were to have say d over dx of some function with the with the integration stretching from g of x to some h of x and I got the function f of s small f of s times ds then I can rewrite this entire thing to be as d over dx of in this case it's going to be f of h of x, the same thing, follow it up with h of x, followed by a negative sign and capital F of g of x, with all the assumption being standing true. So this is what is this. Now this can be rewritten as f dash of h of x multiplied with h dash of x negative f dash of g of x and this has to be followed by the differentiation g, da, g of x, differentiation of g of x, so it's going to be g dash of x. But what is this? Clearly we know that f of x is the antiderivative of the function f of x, so that this is going to be equal to f, f of h of x times h dash of x, negative f of g of x times d g dash of x. So on the left hand side what have we got? We got d over dx of the integral g of x stretching from stretching up to h of x with f of s times d of s. So this is the important concept that we would have to use. Okay. Now I mentioned this. What are we given? We have been given this question. So see the see the see the function that we have been. I would say see what we have been given. We have expected to find a function such that f stretching from f r to r, and that we have given this. This is what we have given. So from this, we have to extract the function. Okay, we got to extract the function from this information. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to rewrite this over here. So let me rewrite that down. So the first step what we would do is consider, consider integral 0 to sin x f of t times sin t times dt is equal to f of sin x negative 1. So we are considering this from the in given information. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to be differentiating both sides by with reference to x. So d over dx, I'm taking d over dx on both sides. So it's going to be d over dx integral 0 to sin x f of t sin of t dt is equal to d over dx of f of sin x negative 1. Now this is very much similar to what we have been discussing. The only thing is that we got f of t sin t. That doesn't matter. We would just still go on to apply fundamental theorem of calculus with chain rule. So applying this, this would be rewritten as, so I start off with f of, this is going to be taking the place of this. So it's going to be f of sine of x. Let me place that sine of x. And then followed by this sine of sine x. And this has to be multiplied with the h dash of x. So this differential. So the differential of sine x is going to be cos x. So place that. That's it. There's nothing else to do further. Right? Because this is going to be 0. Now, on the right hand side, we don't need to apply anything, just straightforward differentiation. So, differential of f of sine of x, this is going to be f of sine x. You're, you're differentiating it, right? So, when you differentiate uh, this function, f of sine x, you need to place that dash there, f dash of sine x. Times differentiation of sine x. So, differentiation of sine x is going to be cos x. 
and differentiation of this component this is a constant that will lead you to zero so this is what we have got and from this the solution is straightforward so what i'm going to do is uh, let me move on to the the next page so let me rewrite that whatever i've got so i've got f of sin x times sin of sin x times cos x is equal to f dash of sin x times cos x i know you would be tempted to cancel the cos x but don't do that just push this f of sin x down to the denominator so this is going to be sin of sin x times cos x is equal to f dash of sin x cos x over f of sin x so this is what you got so now what we would be doing is we would be integrating both sides so let me write that down integrating both sides we get so we would be integrating with reference to x so it's going to be integral sin of sin x times cos x times dx is equal to integral f dash of sin x times cos x over f of sin x times dx now what i'm going to do is i would substitute first i will show you the integration for the left hand side so let it be let integration by substitution so let this sin x be equal to some t now if i differentiate sin x i would get cos x dx is equal to dd so because of this i can rewrite this as integral sin of t because sin x is t cos x dx is dt now if you integrate this this is going to be integral of sin t is going to be negative cos t right but t is sin x so this is going to be negative cos of sin x so this is what we have got on the right hand side what i'm going to do is i'm going to substitute let f of sin x be equal to some p or i should say if i differentiate this differential of f of sin x is going to be f dash of sin x times differential of sin x is going to be cos x times dx is equal to dp so this is what i'm going to substitute so this is going to be integral f of sin x cos x dx is, i mean it's it's actually f dash of sin x cos x dx is going to be f dash of sin x cos x dx is equal to dp so substitute dp there over f of sin x is going to be p now this is going to be ln p which is nothing but ln of my p is going to be f of sin x right so i'm going to substitute f of sin x there fine plus arbitrary constant c now i can rewrite this entire quantity in this fashion so ln of f of sin x is equal to c negative of cos of sin x i can rewrite this now there is a law in logarithm now if you got something like this a log of a to the base b is equal to some e then you can rewrite this as a is equal to b raised to the power e you can rewrite this okay now if you have something like this a ln ln a is equal to some m then you can rewrite this a is equal to e raised to the power m because the base here is e the base here is b so this is natural logarithm this is common logarithm so that's why i'm able to rewrite it like this now this is base e so this is natural logarithm so i can rewrite this as rewriting we get so what happens here this is going to be f of sin x is equal to e raised to the power of c negative cos of sin x this is what we've got so this is the function okay but in this case it is f of sin x so what i am going to do is i am going to be extending this to a stronger function 
extending this to a stronger function. We can do that. So this would mean I need to have this function for any x. So just like it is said, you you know, if something is satisfies for a stronger function, every weaker function will fall in place. That's simple as that. So this would mean I can I'm going to be considering a function for any x. So f of x is equal to e raised to the power c negative cos of x. So now this is the function we've got, but we've got a constant c. We need to find we need to find this c. We were given what is that we were given? We were given this important thing that is integral 0 to sin x f of t times sin t dt is equal to f of sin x negative 1. We were given this. Okay. Now for f of t so if I were to take this for f of t, okay, I'm going to use this, but f of x is equal to e raised to the power c negative cos x. So this would mean f of t is equal to e raised to the power c negative cos t. So if I'm going to be taking this as 1, therefore I can rewrite 1 as integral 0 to sin x f of t is what? e raised to the power c negative cos t times sin t dt. Let me place that sin x negative 1. So now we can integrate this guy. We can integrate this particular quantity. Now how are we going to integrate? We are going to naturally integrate by substitution. So I am going to say let c negative cos t be equal to some q. I differentiate this, I am going to get sin t, because this is 0, differential of cos t is negative sin t, so negative negative will become positive, so this is going to be sin t dt is equal to dq. So if I were to substitute, substitute this over here, then this is going to be integral. I am not going to change the limits, so let, let's have the limits as it is. So let me just integrate this first, so it is going to be e raised to the power q and this is going to be dq. So if I were to solve this, this is going to be e raised to the power q. Right? So this is what I have got. Now this is definite limit, so we don't need to add an arbitrary constant. So now, but q is what? e is uh, raised to, uh, this is going to be rewritten as e raised to the power c negative cos t with the limits being 0 to sin x. So this is what we have got. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to substitute the upper limit. So, if I were to substitute the upper limit, this is going to give me e raised to the power c negative cos of sin x. Okay, so I'm, I'm basically, I'm substituting the upper limit. So, when I substitute the upper limit, I'm going to get this, right? So, upper limit minus the lower limit. So this is going to be e raised to the power c negative cos of when t is equal to 0, this is going to become 1. So this is what I've got. So this is equal to now f of sin x. So let me just come back to f of sin x. Now what exactly is f of sin x? Now f of f of x is equal to e raised to the power c negative cos x. This is, this is, we know, this, the function value we know. This is what is it. So I, I'm just merely using it here. Now, if I were to find f of sin x, then f of sin x is going to be e raised to the power c negative cos of sin x. Right? So this is my functional value when x is sin x. So now what you got to do is you have to take this and substitute it here. So that's going to be e raised to the power c negative cos of sin x followed by this negative 1. So that follows here, that follows all through this place. 
Then finally over here when we land up here, this is going to be e raised to the power c negative cos of sin x followed by a negative 1. That's what we got. Now comparing left hand side with right hand side, see what we got here. The same thing we got here. Now on the other end, we got e raised to the power negative 1. Now when will this be equal to 1? So we need to find out this one, right? So this would mean equating, we get e raised to the power c negative 1 equal to 1. So when will this be equal to 1? This is equal to 1 only when c negative 1 is equal to 0. So what does it mean c negative 1 equal to 0? This means the value of c is equal to 1. So we have found out the value of c. Now since we have found out the value of c, all we need to do is take the value of c and put it into this function. So this would mean the required function is f of x equal to e raised to the power 1 negative cos x. So this completes the solution for this question students because the question requires us to find a function and I have done it. Thank you students. Enjoy your day.